Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, think about liking and subscribing. There's a lot to go over. And the first thing that I want to talk about was the PlayStation Plus premium tier. The games, the list is out and people are talking about the games, the PlayStation 1 games, the PSP games, the PS3 games that are streaming only, which is a disappointment for myself personally. I don't like streaming. I just don't think that's a great way to play video games, but I do enjoy the catalog of games so far that they're able to draw from. And that's the distinction I keep speaking about when I talk about these two services. One is promising day and date. And again, that's the problem with Game Pass. I know a lot of people now are talking up the idea that there's so many other games, even Xbox Game Pass saying things like, you know, tell me you only limit yourself to AAA games without telling me you only limit yourself to AAA games. Well, Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, whoever runs these accounts, that's Microsoft. Microsoft is the one that sold Game Pass on the idea, the value of first party AAA games. And if now you're a person talking up the idea that in a service, those AAA games are just sort of not that important. And there's so many other games to play second party third party deals, small indie titles, then essentially you're making the case for PlayStation Plus, which is Sony's mantra. We're going to give you a history of games that we have, which by the way, is much richer than Xbox's. Xbox has been around for around 20 years, PlayStation about 25, but PlayStation over those 25 years has made a number of really great first party games, has fostered a number of really great second party games deals and relationships and even some third party deals and relationships so they have much more to draw from for their service and again if AAA games isn't a big deal now and it's only those indies and second party and third party deals then playstation plus is doing it right according to xbox game pass and when their first party comes out they don't need to be in that service because clearly there aren't any in Xbox Game Pass now, other than the fact that you can point to Halo Infinite, which I don't think is a huge selling point for Game Pass. Forza Horizon 5, the fifth iteration, is a really great, great game. Okay, maybe that could be something that could be pointed to, but I don't think that a subscription service lives or dies on anything other than really great content. And if you've had great content in the past, it could be great content today for your subscription service. That's why I'm pretty excited about the PlayStation Plus premium tier, and I'll be subscribing to that as soon as it's available. My Game Pass subscription is expiring in five days. I thought that they gave me a dollar deal for another year, but I'm going to have at least three years at a dollar, and I think that's enough. I'll wait to see when these first party games come out, and if they're good, I'll pay $15 to play one of those games. Why pay $60? Uh, I, maybe I will, I don't know, but uh, I'm not really keen on this idea of everything being in a subscription service. I don't think that's going to be great for the industry. I know a lot of people drew parallels recently to music and talking about Spotify and nobody wants to buy individual songs anymore. They just want them in a subscription. I think the big difference is those artists who create these songs, they can go on tour. They can make a lot of money touring around the country. These developers... They simply can't. They have to make a game and hopefully cut a deal and make enough money to offset the cost of development or lower the money that they spend developing games, which is another concern of mine. And, uh, you know, I want those big AAA experiences to stay that way. Certainly, I like the smaller ones. But again, we're going to have to wait and see when it comes to these subscription services. But I do like the idea and the design of PlayStation Plus Premium. So these online social media gaming communities, PlayStation, Xbox, and to a lesser degree, Nintendo, because to be honest with you, if you look into the Nintendo online community, it is not what the Xbox community or PlayStation community is. Now, I want to be clear. I'm sure that there are some great people who only talk positively about the things that they're experiencing and the games that they love when it comes to PlayStation and Xbox. However, Social media just doesn't seem to support those types of people. And what we're seeing now is this. I don't know when this happened, but the new game isn't video games. It's social media. 
It's how many hits, how many likes, how many subs, how many followers, and somehow that means victory when it comes to talking about video game systems and the games that are on those systems. Recently, you know, the, I, I mentioned earlier about uh, Xbox Game Pass saying, tell me you don't know anything or tell me you limit yourself to AAA games without telling me you limit yourself to AAA games, which is a ridiculous statement, especially if you're the company talking about everyone's a gamer, doesn't matter what you play, then you should be able to limit yourself to AAA games if that's what you like. But I digress. And then you saw Kotaku run the article talking about this sort of <clears throat> decline in Xbox Game Pass interest and it's pal it's palpable it's out there you can see it you can feel it I feel it myself certainly and then they go back and forth and the victory is how many likes Xbox Game Pass tweet gets over Kotaku's tweet that's somehow the game that's somehow a victory and I don't know how or why this happened I mean I do know how or why it happened really really old men decided to assign value to themselves by creating personas online essentially about toys and the more people hear what they want to hear the more followers a person gets the more likes you get it just doesn't make any sense you i mean sh this should all be about video games we should be talking about games you should be comparing games you should be wanting quality you win nothing you absolutely win nothing by getting a like on social media when it comes to saying something negative. Here's here's an example of this. So a few hours after that story breaks, the same story pops up about Sony and a harassment suit. And it's the same person refiling a suit. Now, every single person who hit the like button on that Xbox Game Pass response to Kotaku hit the like button on the information about that harassment suit when it comes to Sony. Think about that for a second. Think about the psychology behind that. Somehow you're defending companies. Somehow you're happy that bad news comes out or news that you don't even know if it's accurate or not. But somehow you're going to hit the like button there because you're winning something online. This isn't sports. It's not the same psychology. You're not rooting for a team. And, you know, those extreme people who go to these games and then beat each other up over their teams. That's essentially the group of people that you belong to. These online communities centered around Xbox are just garbage. The online communities centered around PlayStation, they're just garbage. And they're filled, filled with garbage people. And it's a shame because, like I said, there are quite a few people within each community that just enjoy games, want to talk about the games coming out, want to be excited about them, want to follow them up until release, but you don't get a lot of traction that way. You get a lot of traction by being the exact opposite, somebody who really doesn't play video games, but plays social media because that's the new game. And you know who these people are. Xbox has a ton of them right now. Back in the day, PlayStation sort of took the cake, but Xbox has jumped the shark with Fonzie and Microsoft is to blame because they pump up these people, they promise them the world, they give them free stuff, and you don't get any accurate information. And hopefully the FTC now getting in will help a little bit. I don't think anything will happen or change, but hopefully if you have to disclose that you've got free Game Pass for 10 years and seven Xboxes before you give a, a review of something, you'll look as foolish as I know that you are. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.